Pro Football Hall of Famer Isaac Bruce and Doc Holliday are rambling about those Los Angeles Rams. Ramble on. Hi, how are you? Welcome to another episode of Ramblings with Pro Football Hall of Famer Isaac Bruce and Doc Holliday. I am Doc Holliday. I'm not happy. He's Isaac Bruce. He's always happy, but I don't know if he's too happy today. Isaac, how you feeling, man? You good? You happy? What's up, Doc? I got joy, man. I got joy. Um, you know, I was a little disappointed yesterday in what I saw, you know, as far as my, my squad, my team, uh, you know, it's, you know, the way we execute it. Um, yeah, yeah, I got joy, but um, listen, we need to we need to stir ourselves up, man. So let's let's get to stirring, man. Let's 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 get let's get on with this thing. Well, the thing about it, man, you and I are always stirred up, man. The problem is our Rams weren't stirred up too much in Green Bay on Sunday, man. We go to Green Bay riding a two game losing streak, Isaac. We was coming off a, 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 a off week, so we had a couple of weeks to get ready. But all we did was go to Green Bay and, you know, continue that losing streak. The Packers took care of us 36 to 28, man. Now, looking at this loss, now, they didn't physically dominate us like Tennessee and San Francisco did. But, bro, they dominated the time of possession. They had the ball, damn near 40 minutes of a 60-minute game. Not only that, Aaron Rodgers got his Aaron Rodgers on, even though he got a little pinky toe that was broken. It did not matter because he was tossing that thing. Not only that. We committed all kinds of turnovers, man. And here we are a couple of weeks ago. They were talking about Super Bowl contenders. Now, three straight losses, seven and four. I just don't know, Isaac. I mean, what did you see happen against the Packers other than them just straight, you know, just giving us their work? Well, I saw the Rams going up against another Super Bowl contending team. I mean, uh, you know, we talk about teams and players individually being on scholarship and things of that nature, Doc. But, you know, when you go on the road versus another team and their elements uh, that has a your future Hall of Fame at quarterback that has players and in, in, in a defense that has what, what is now floating around the league as far as the Rams are concerned, a blueprint on how to play and to defeat the Rams, you get what you saw yesterday, Doc. I mean, I, I saw a better approach, a better – product on the field by the uh, Los Angeles Rams yesterday than I had been seeing the, the previous two weeks. But then to come back and really not really execute at the, at the level I felt like Coach McVay wanted us to execute at. And you that's what you get, Doc. So, um, you know, you got the elements that's a part of it. You got execution that's a huge part of it. And you have turnovers that's a part of it, Doc. Those things, those three things right there for a team that's built the way we're built it ain't going to come out. It ain't going to work out well, Doc. So um, that's that's the end result that you see. You see uh, the, the Green Bay Packers get to a, a point where they're controlling the ball, they're controlling the line of scrimmage, and then at the end they can play big boy bully football by giving it to the big running back Dylan and just letting him fall forward every single time. So you start to, you start to see that blueprint that's floating around the league, and guess what, Doc? You're going to see it again next week. Until you stop it, until you come out and perform better against that blueprint, you're going to see it every week. And you th- just looking at it, man, the Packers had 78 plays. They had the ball for damn near 40 minutes. The football game is only 60 minutes. We had 61 plays. And the thing about it, Green Bay had 13 drives. We had 14 drives. That means they were having long, sustained drives. And before we get to how, you know, individual play, you really can't be too much – to anybody, bro, when you're turning the ball over. We had three turnovers. They had one. Now, Matthew Stepp, we've been talking good about. Him. He's been playing well, bro. But Sean McVay can say what he wants to say, that he don't really agree with the criticism of Matthew Stafford, but I got, I got to say it. Second possession of the game, he got stripped. Okay, that happens. But two more picks. For the third straight game, Ice, he threw a pick six. And looking at the pick six, 
He was looking at Cooper Cup the entire time. You're a veteran. He was looking at Cooper Cup the entire time. Pass rush got to him a little bit. He had to step up in the pocket some. Still looking at Cooper Cup. So all the DB was doing was watching Matthew Stafford. He was already had his eyes on Cooper Cup. Watching Stafford. So when Stafford had to hesitate even a little bit more to step up in the pocket, he never took his eyes off Cooper Cup. So it was really a, it was a great pick by the DB. I think it was Sewell, Douglas, something like that. Picks it, takes it to the house, man. Matthew Stafford, that's three straight games, Isaac. He has thrown pick sixes, man. Now, are we justified in criticizing Matthew Stafford? Because I read some, they said, if this was Jerry Goff, Cass would be killing his ass right now. But it's Stafford. And I think Cass would be killing Goff because we have been seeing that from Goff year after year with the inconsistencies. But are, are people fair with criticizing Matthew Stafford for another performance, which he ain't the reason we lost, but he ain't, you know, he's one of the reasons we lost the game. Well, Doc, it's always fair to coach up and, and I won't say criticize, but to chastise every player that's on the team, Doc. No one's above coaching. I mean, no one is above that. You talk about the strip sack initially. If we're going to talk about him being strip sack, first of all, we're going to talk about Andrew Whitworth not blocking or keeping this defensive end off the quarterback. You know, it's, it's his blind side. He gets hit on the elbow, balls on the ground. They scrambling and, and, and they pick up the ball and recover. That pass rush all day, all game long Doc, was, was being played on our side of the field. There, there wasn't much movement. So when you start, like I always say, when you start to turn these facilitators into football players, this is normally what you get. You get rush throws. You get inaccurate throws at times, and you get guys who really don't look like they normally look throughout the game. So, you know, you talk about the pick six, would happen, which happened when he was throwing the ball to Cooper Cup. Of course. I mean, he, he's being rushed. It's third down. That pressure's been coming all game from a four-man rush. You have seven guys drop back into coverage. It's a great play recognition by Rasul Butler. I mean, he, uh, Cooper Cup is running the, the under route that we call it, and he steps right in front of it. So, there wasn't much work to be done by Rasul other than, than, the, than mental recognition and play recognition and just stepping right in front of Cooper Cup. But here's the big thing that we're not talking about, Doc. We're now seeing what it feels like to be playing offense without Robert Woods. Yes. Robert Woods cleaned up. He was the deodorant for this offense, man. Let's just be real. Because he can be the running back. He can be, he can be the guy that, that's also – bring in an extra man to cover him to open up Cooper Cup and you feed it. And that's just the way you feed it because he commanded a whole lot of attention. I mean, God bless OBJ. He's trying, he's starting to get into the groove, but Robert Woods is the captain of the offense, man. He's the guy that makes things go. If he's not there, there's no Cooper Cup. If he's not there, it's harder for Cooper Cup to get open. You know what I'm saying? The defense can focus on this guy. So, we're seeing what happens when Robert Woods not around. It, it isn't as comfortable as it used to be. And um, it, it, and this is what we're doing. We're going to need other people to step up. We're going to need OBJ to get deeper involved within the offense. And you know what? We're going to need another level from Cooper Cup right now and our quarterback. That's the way it is. Hey, what kind of deodorant though? Because I use secret powder fresh. What kind of deodorant is Robert Woods? Hey man, we like we like that we like that natural <laughs> stuff, man. We like that lemon okay. and, and stuff that you know that that eradicates smell. You know what I'm saying? Not cover it up, but eradicates. Uh, I got you, man. I like it, man. But look, I don't be stinking, man. I don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, the Rams were stinking <laughs> on Sunday because it, as now looking at the numbers, man. Matthew Stafford, 21 for 38, 302 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked twice, and you're right. I, I, I don't really hold it against him, the fact that he did fumble the ball because how it did happen, that's on the offensive lineman. That's on Whitworth. And we talked about the offensive line, how well they play earlier in the season. But they've been lately, they've been getting their ass ran, ran up on. Uh, we couldn't run the ball yesterday at all, man. Just no room at all. But our defense as well didn't allow them to run the ball. We talk about Dylan. Uh, he did. He had some tough runs. Now, if you look at the box score and then watch the game, you'd be like, well, dude just had 20 carries for 69 yards. But some of those carries were huge, man. First downs, got a touchdown pass. And hit the physicality he played with, bro, what, the, the time when he ran over Taylor Rapp, I was just like, oh, my gosh. Because the dude is built like Earl Campbell and Saquon Barkley. But 
they he he was running physical even though he didn't have a lot of yards, man. Our offensive line really got you know got dealt with. But on the other side, uh, Devont Devonte Adams, eight catches, one hundred and four yards, no touchdowns. He was targeted nine times. I know Cooper Cup came into the NFL as the leading receiver, but Devontae Adams is something special, bro. I mean, we didn't have Jalen Ramsey following him all over the place, but he, you know, he caught on Jalen a couple of times too, but, you know, that's going to happen. But Devontae Adams, man, he just gave us all kinds of problems, especially on that 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 long pass they threw to him when Deontay Dion had to be switched on him. He just, he just ran right past him, man. Uh, Devontae Adams is a problem, and he caused all kinds of problems for our defensive secondary. Well, Doc, let's just be real, man. You, when you're talking about the Green Bay Packers, you always start off with Aaron Rodgers, man. When they have Aaron Rodgers who can – you talk about deodorant, he's deodorant and cologne because he can clean up a whole lot of stuff that, 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 that people can't do. He can wipe out a whole lot of iniquities that you may have in your offense. So – and you, you add to that an offensive line that played on our side of the line of scrimmage, man. They took, I think they took it really personal, uh, uh, you know, playing against the names that we have from a defensive standpoint, the Jalen Ramsey's, the Aaron Donald's, the Von Miller's, the, the Leonard Floyd's, they, they take that personal. So they want to prove that, you know, we can run the ball against this, this defense, this defensive line. They went right out and did. You add in Dylan. Dylan looks like a young version of Dorsey Levins to me, man. That's 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 when the, the the Packers really had it going, where they could run the ball when they wanted to, they could pass it when they wanted to, pass, protect, and run block at the same time. So, you're talking about a full fledged offense that has very minimal weaknesses. Doc, they can go out and do it all. Then you have Devonte Adams. So when you talk about Devonte Adams, it, this is this is where the Cooper Cups of the world want to get to because. You put a zone in front of this guy, it doesn't matter. You play a man to man, he's 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 chopping at the bit and slobbing at the mouth because you want to disrespect and play him man to man. So it doesn't matter where you put this guy as far as the offense is concerned. You can put him in the slot, outside, he can do it all. He is an all pro wide receiver, and these are the levels that guys should be trying to attain when you talk about being the best wide receiver in the league. And not just from a production standpoint, but from a, a situational standpoint. When you command coverage, when you can dictate coverage from a defensive standpoint and manipulate coverage, is Devontae Adams when you when you uh, start looking at that that position. I'm glad you said that because you and I agree, man. Devontae Adams is clearly the best receiver in the NFL to me now because being the best receiver and being the most productive as far as stats are two different things. Cooper Cup had the most yards, but Devontae Adams with his skill set and what he can do and how he can still work around because Randall Cobb is good. But he ain't no Robert Woods. You know, ain't nobody else on his team, on Green Bay's team, that's close to what Robert Woods is for the Rams and Devontae Adams still getting that work, even though he still gets all this attention. And you're right, man. Aaron Rodgers, I ain't really nothing, you know, ain't really nothing I can say about him. And the thing about Aaron Rodgers, he's raised the bar so high is that he does great things and you almost just slide past it because that's his norm. Watching him, his problem is because we, we got one sack. We got pressure on him a couple of times, but even with Aaron Rodgers, Isaac, the thing, man, is that, and I'm glad we ain't going to face a dude like him every week because dude's release is so fast and so quick, and he makes decisions just like that. I'm watching him, bro. He he has his eyes set on who he wants to throw. He might look at it, that receiver that he wants, that primary receiver for about two seconds. Then he immediately goes to his second and third option and hits one of them, and his release is so fast, man, so it's hard to get to him. but. Luckily for us, we don't face a dude like that. But talking about our defense, man, and just go ahead, Isaac. Go ahead, go ahead. You know, you know, just to add to that a little bit, Doc, we're talking about a guy who hadn't practiced in three weeks. You know, he missed the COVID week, and then he came back and he missed because of his foot, and then, and then had whatever else they had. But he hadn't practiced in three weeks. And you talk about his ability to get, to get the ball out fast, Doc. That's a wide receiver's dream. He doesn't really start to play – football until he starts getting to his second read because he already has mentally where he's going first of all with the football he can manipulate the defense but if that that read is taken away that's when he starts to play football and he still has a strong enough arm quick enough delivery to get to his second third read in that play and still make it hard on you man and it's hard to get a pass rush on the guy because he gets the ball out so fast so 
like I say, he's deodorant and he's cologne at the same time. He's all of it. He cleans it up. He makes it smell good, man, because he made the Green Bay Packers smell real good. Their offense smell real good yesterday. Made our defense smell real bad because, you know, we've added all these names, you know, and we didn't win all out, bro. You know, we're trying to win the Super Bowl this year. That is no yeah. question about it. Just added Von Miller. He's still getting acclimated. And I know people can talk. They can say what they want to about Von Miller. But I think he was he's, he was dealing with a hurt ankle when he was in Denver. So he's still trying to get healthy. Odell yeah. Beckham, uh, his best game, just his second game, his best game since coming to L.A. You know, five catches, 81 yards, had the long 54-yard touchdown. I think he hit him with a sluggo. Which was which was good, but his his like his back was bothering him. So for him to tough through that, but all these big names have not led to big wins so far because we continue to lose, man. And third game in a row, and like I, I agree with Sean McVay, there's still a lot of football left to play, man. Still six games, and we still just seven and four. But we're not trending very good right now. I mean, none of these L's look good. And before we, you know, we, I, I ain't blaming anybody. It's just it's because it's a team loss. But they did a good job of containing Aaron Donald. They did a good job of containing Von Miller. They did a good job of containing Leonard Floyd. Uh, and Devontae Adams got loose. But uh, J.J. Koski, I, can't, I, I, gotta, look, I gotta say something about you, bro. I mean, this, this is my thing with J.J. You're there to be special teams, man. They really not use you in, as a receiver. So your only job is to play special teams. So when you get special teams opportunities, they want to give Cooper Cup a break from returning punts, so they put you back there. Now, punt return is tough. I get it. They did pinball him, bro. They they pinballed his ass, man, and I know them licks hurt because they hurt. He dropped the ball. Okay, boom. He dropped the ball, Sean McVay, with the little stoic look like, okay. But then when you get it on the kickoff return, you just drop it again. Those are the kind of mistakes we cannot have because certain players on the team are not allowed to make certain mistakes like other players can. So just the overall, the turnovers, man, that hurt us. Self-inflicted penalties and just self-inflicted uh, uh, mistakes, that hurt us, 36 to 28. But how do you feel about the squad, man? You, you, I, I still think, you know, we still got a great chance to get it together. You know, we got Jacksonville coming up, so that's the game we should win. But like you say, this is the league and everybody on scholarship. But how do you feel about, I guess, our prospects for the rest of the season? Well, I'll tell you what, Doc, going into a game like that, and you talk about, you know, the offense not having the ball that much, other facets of the game of the team have to step up. Being special teams is one of them. I felt like that our return guys weren't that comfortable returning. I don't know if it was cold weather. I don't know if the ball being slick slick on your gloves and you're putting the ball on the ground, but putting the ball on the ground, Doc, it's never acceptable. It's always unacceptable. So when you get those opportunities, if, you, if, you, if you're those young guys, you get those opportunities, you have to make the most of them. You have to show this, 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 the staff, your teammates, that there's a reason why you're here and whatever it is I'm doing, I'm going to make, I'm going to make sure I'm the person to turn this game around. I mean, I'm going to make a big play, make a big tackle, make a big return. Those are things you got to do, man. You got to you got to feel and have confidence within yourself to be able to do that. So we got to get it fixed. I mean, there were a couple of punts yesterday that weren't normally the way we punt the football yesterday. So we got to find ways right now to manufacture small plays into big plays. And those big plays got to start translating to wins. I mean, it's coming up. Next game is the next game. We play Jacksonville. I mean, yeah, Jacksonville is a team that you can't take lightly. You can't look at their, their schedule or their record and say, you know what, this is a game that we should win, you know, just because they're coming out here. They got a young quarterback playing, a rookie head coach, and a rookie quarterback. We, we can't afford that luxury anymore, Doc. We can't say that anymore because while we're doing what we're doing, there are other teams in the NFC right now that are continuing to win, particularly in our conference, our division, uh, like the Arizona Cardinals, they're continuing to win. So we got to go out and play Ram football, the, the Ram football that got us initially to seven and one to be, we're still in the mix, but we got to get deeper in the mix for this playoff run, man. Now I'm glad you said something about the, the punting. That was, that wasn't good. Now. You know, I, I've been kind of laying off kickers this season. I had Everybody said, gets coached. Everybody. I'm just, gets I'm just coached. saying, you know, I'm just, I've been kind of laying up off them because you kind of made me feel a little guilty about, you know, but Hey, I'm just saying, man, I, when you're when you're when you got a job and it's special teams, whether it's returning punts, returning kicks, punting, and that's all you do, 
your ass better do it good, man, because you can't make mistakes like superstars on the team because after losses, sometimes coaches be mad and they be pissed off, especially after you, you're on a three-game losing streak. So a lot of times they watching the film, man, they looking like, you know, hell, I'm mad. We need to make some changes. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to send somebody to the house. We need to scare some folks. And if you're one of them, per- them people, man, that only have a specialty and you, you ain't doing that properly, because that's what I was always scared of. Like, even when I was on the practice squad, you know, we lose. I'm like, God damn, they, he might want to send somebody home tomorrow because he's mad. But I'm just saying you got to stay focused, man. And, you know, I, I expect us to get it together because OBJ, Von Miller, all those dudes still got to get acclimated to this. But this is not what we expected, man, when we added all these guys to still be struggling like this, Isaac. So what do you think the mental is? If you was in that locker room, what would be your mental, man? Coming up from here, now you're on a three-game losing streak, but you're still seven and four, so, you know, the record still looks pretty good. Well, well, Doc, you know what? I know this to be a, a to be a truth. What a man fears to come upon him. So if I was in that locker room, I'm talking self-encouragement. First, I'm going to start with myself, that man in the mirror. I'm going to that man in the mirror. I'm going to start reevaluating, man, what's going on with me? How can I get better? Am I encouraging my teammates or am I being a detriment to them? And then from there, I'm going to take it all the way to, to, to my room, my wide receiver room, from the wide receiver room to the offense, man. And just make sure that we once again go over these goals. Goal number one is to be the NFC West Division champion. That's always goal number one. So, I mean, and from there, we take it from that meeting room out to the practice field, man. We got to do everything crispy. We got to make sure that we're executing what the plays that are called and making sure that we're all on the same page. And we got to play to the echo of the whistle. Playing to the echo of the whistle is going to make you a nuisance to, to, the, to the guy that's playing across from you. And it's going to be encouraging to your teammates when they see it. They say, man, look how, look how uh, uh, Brian Allen is finishing right here. Look how Whitworth is finishing right here. Look at our running backs, our young guys, Henderson and um, Sony Michelle. Look how they're finishing their plays, finishing blocks. All of that stuff translates to winning, Doc, on the practice field. And from there, it carries over to the game field, man. And, and we got to stop stop the bleeding and get this thing turned around completely. Gotcha, man. Anything else you want to add before we get out of here, brother? That's it, man. It's time to go to work, man. Time, time to, to go, go to work. work. That's going to yeah, do no it old, for. Ain't no old woe is me attitude, bro. It's time to go out here and get to work. It is some woe is me dudes up in there, though. You know it's some woe is me dudes. There's always some woe is me dudes. And be the dudes you don't think to. You be the dudes you be think that tough, but they be worn. Because they look like they were pouting a little bit. Like, you know, I you can be mad, but don't be pouting. Man. So, you know, just be mad and get it get it together. Hey, that's why that's why we don't move, we're not moved by what we see. We don't judge by what our eyes see. We look at the fruit. We look at the fruit of what's coming out of a guy's mouth and what and, and what we're hearing out of his mouth. That's always gonna tell the story. Don't tell me you're an apple tree and you got oranges on it, man. No, it ain't going to work that way. (laughs) Well said, brother. Well said. And that's going to do it for another well episode of Ramblings with Pro Football Hall of Fame. Isaac Bruce and Doc Holliday. Until next week, we out. 